Hey, Jim Bruce, it's Crafty Carter here. I uh, wanted to talk about something different today. I wanted to talk about, um, rather than the details of a specific project, how we go about um, building these individual projects in general. Um, specifically, I wanted to go over uh, surface mount technology uh, assembly at home. A lot of people find this a bit of a uh, scary prospect, and they like to work with um, more traditional through-hole components at home. But really, um, today has never been a better day to start doing surface mount work at home. Um, all of the latest chips and stuff mostly don't come in through-hole uh, packages anymore. So surface mount is becoming more and more important. So what do you need uh, in order to do surface mount work? Um, well, first off, you need to have uh, printed circuit boards that are surface mount uh, enabled, so to speak. I get mine made in uh, China. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. They cost somewhere between um, like a buck fifty a board, ten bucks a board, depending on the comp complexity and the quantity of copper. Like, this is a small board, but it's got six ounce copper on it, so it cost me about five or six bucks a board. This is a four layer board, and uh, it's also quite a bit bigger, as you can see, and it cost me about ten bucks a board. But uh, your regular garden variety two layer one ounce board costs, you know, as little as a dollar a board in small quantities. So it really couldn't be a better time to be involved in, you know, doing electronics design from your home office. Um, so what do you do? You have a, you've got a board, you've designed it in some software package. I use Eagle, which is um, a German software package that's sort of free, it's got a freemium uh, sales pitch, so you can have sort of a dumbed down version for nothing, or you give them 150 bucks and you can get a pretty, uh, you can get a full functioning version and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, it's a great package and it's pretty easy to use and uh, I certainly would suggest it to anybody who is interested in trying this sort of stuff out. But uh, then you buy all your parts and you can get them from a number of vendors, Mauser and DigiKey, come to mind off, uh, right off the bat. Um, I like to store my projects in these bins where all of the uh, different parts go in for a project go in one bin. And uh, then when I want to build the project, it's, um, well, you know, there's a couple of these and a couple of those and one of this and one of that, and it's a pain in the ass to um, find everything at the right time in the right place. So what I like to do is organize and aliquot all of my parts in advance. And the trick that I use is double-sided tape in a notebook. And I cut all the parts as I need them and place them next to what the part is in a notebook. And then when I want to build them, I use tweezers and I pull off the cellophane and use a vacuum placement machine to uh, remove the parts from the tape and place them on the board. Of course, placing them on the board doesn't help unless you have solder paste on them, um, or uh, otherwise you have to uh, have soldering iron and tweezers and uh, you know solder and all that stuff. So I always use solder paste for my projects, and you can uh, apply it in a couple of different ways. You can use a compressor and forced air, and you can push the paste through a syringe onto the board one pad at a time. Or you can use a stencil like I like to use. Um, and I have these made for about 50 bucks a board. And uh, at 50 bucks a board, uh, I can then put paste on there, use the putty knife to put the paste through the holes and onto the board and then I can just use a vacuum wand to pick the uh, parts off the tape and place them onto the paste and then I put them in a reflow oven. Of course that's a whole other thing. Where do you get a reflow oven and aren't they expensive and blah 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 fear, uncertainty and doubt. But no, I, I got mine at Sears. I went to Sears, bought a toaster oven, 
one of the fancy or electronic jobbies for 80 bucks. I think it was on sale. I think it was like last year's model. It was pretty ugly. It's orange. Uh, but who cares? And uh, I ripped out the electronics, left the power supply and the uh, relays and all that stuff. And then I put my own electronics in there to do the um, to do the calculus for doing the reflow profile and stuff. But that was a you know a dollar fifty board. I think I paid I think I paid four dollars and fifty cents for three of them. And uh, you know the software I sort of cobbled together with some resources from online. And uh, I had to build a new graphics library for the LCD that I used because I wanted to actually see what was going on. But you know, a couple of days work, and I have a reflow oven, and I can have as many as I want for the rest of time. So you know, it was time well spent. Plus, I know how my reflow oven works, and I can make it work better if it's a problem. And also, unlike the ones you get for you know 400 bucks on eBay that only have two infrared tubes, mine has four, and it's got a um, convection fan, so I really got a higher quality product than I could have purchased for cheap, and I paid, you know, 80 bucks plus, you know, maybe another 30 bucks in parts and a couple of days labor, but not full days, just, you know, hours here and hours there, so, yeah, uh, I think surface mount work from home with a reflow oven and solder paste is the way to do it, and I just thought I would, uh, share sort of my process with you and I'll maybe go through, we'll build up a board here uh, and I'll piece together a whole video and put it up. So, alrighty guys. Hey guys, it's Crafty Coder here off camera. I'm just wrapping up the build here and I wanted to show you how the vacuum placement tool works. So you peel the tape off and you can stick it on the double stick tape and turn your pump on pick the right tip push the foot pedal down place the part release the foot pedal and that is pretty much how that's done. Um, I'm going to move the camera here, see if that works. Sorry for the glare there. I've pasted the board, I've placed all the parts that I need to place on this version. And it's about to go in the oven, so let's see how it goes. So here's the reflow oven. Like I said, it's just a Black & Decker or something from Sears, I don't know what. And there's the thermocouple in there. I'm going to pick up the board, place it in. I'm going to do this off camera because, well, nothing is actually affixed to the board. So if I shake it or drop it, we're screwed. But uh, I'll uh, show it in there in just a second. The board is now in the oven. We're going to uh, shut the door and give it a cook. I'll be back in uh, five minutes. This is the display on my... Uh, my reflow oven, it's currently heading towards 175 degrees C. It's 225 seconds in. It's uh, 173 and a quarter degrees. And it's cooking. So there's the board. This will be boring for a few seconds, but it'll reflow in, oh, about 20 or 30 seconds. So let's watch. If you're wondering why the thermocouple looks so weird, I put some Sculpey on it so it wouldn't ground on the plate. That's why it's floating up in the air. Oh, it's starting to get shiny. Looks like it's reflowing right now. Alrighty, guys, I need to take a look at it. All right, so at this point, the oven is off, the door is open, and I'm letting it cool enough that I can remove it from the reflow oven. I'll pull it out in about, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds, and uh, inspect it. So at this point, I'll do a visual inspection of the board, make sure there aren't any shorts and that everything looks good. And, uh, yeah, then 
it's pretty much done at this point if you had any um, repairs you needed to make because of a design flaw or whatever this would be a good time to do it because you do um, reflow with solder paste you don't actually have to do much in the way of cleanup I use no clean solder paste and so um, I'll show some high res images later but you'll see that the board comes out pretty clean so anyway this is a real simple um, technique you need to get together a few tools but uh, and spend a few extra dollars but in the end you're able to put together really high quality boards with relative ease so time is money and I like to save time well guys I hope that uh, gives you a little inspiration about some of the stuff you can do in your home lab um, I know at first I was a little uh, concerned about so reflow soldering and solder paste with surface mount components but uh, necessity was the mother of invention for me. And this really raised my game to a whole new level. So I hope you guys give it a shot too. Take care.